Hey guys, my name is Ren, and I'm bad at art. Today, I have some paintings in gouache because I love gouache. Still using the Maya Himi or Himi Maya gouache set. I'd look at it, but it's across the room from me right now, so I can't tell you what it's called. Um, I love this gouache very much, as I'm sure you may have noticed, because I use it in every video. It's great. I highly recommend it. Moving on. <laughs> so what I wanted to do was try to capture a mood in some paintings. Um, it's kind of hard to put into words what feeling I'm really going for, but I'm definitely hoping that I captured it. There is this genre of music um, which is sort of like on the outskirts of the pop punk genre uh, called Midwest Emo or Emo Revival. And it is absolute garbage. And I love it with my entire heart. I love it so much. Um, and being from the Midwest myself, I, I have, you know, a special sort of personal feeling towards the Midwest. Um, not to sound too un-pop punk or anything, but I love the Midwest and I, you know, I don't think I could ever leave here. I love it. I love it so much. Um, and so for me, this feeling is sort of like nostalgic and moody um, and not dark, but heavy and sort of just like saturated with emotion however those emotions are sort of desaturated and so one of the things that I really was trying to do was capture these sort of desaturated colors this misty heavy sort of mood and I I think I may have gotten it but you I mean you can leave a comment tell me how well you think I did <laughs> um so I painted both of these photos from reference. It's pretty much exactly from reference. Um, and they are on a board on my Pinterest. So you can go find my reference images there. Um, and yeah, I really liked this experiment. Uh, one of the things that I am not very good at in painting is mixing paint. I'm not awful at color theory in general, but in practice, like, I'm good with color theory in theory, but only in theory. In practice, it's pretty difficult, actually. Um, so I'm working on shifting colors just, just slightly to give them a different sort of appearance. But the paints I'm using, the Maya Himi gouache, they are so, so bright and so super saturated, which is awesome because you can always make something less saturated and you cannot make it more saturated. However, I still fall into that trap of, oh, the sky is blue. I'll just paint some blue in there, which is not, that's not, that's not how you do that. <laughs> um, so... Several times in this first painting here, I had to go over things and just tone them way, way down. The sky was too blue. The trees in the background were too green and everything should have been much more gray. But eventually I do think I found a pretty happy mix and medium in there. Uh, so it was, yeah, I mean, it, it was a really good experiment for me because, like I said, I'm not the best at mixing colors. I got a decent amount of practice with that in the uh, crystal painting, the rock painting video from last week. Um, doing the amber, I also had a lot of like, well, if I add black to the yellow, it's gonna look green. Is the green gonna be out of place? But like those colors are sort of what makes things look realistic. You have to add just enough of a color that's like, oh, amber's orange, so there's no green in it. 
in order to make it look like it's real. And so I'm still, I'm still learning. I'm still practicing. Um, I used that tactic in this piece here as well by adding in some of that really, really dark toned yellow. I was able to get a green that felt desaturated and next to everything around it definitely looked very green, which was awesome. I think that I learned just so much from this piece. And if you've been around here for any amount of time, you'll know how much learning means to me. That's what we're here for, you know? That's what I'm aiming to do. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, definitely one of the hardest parts for me about this piece was just learning those subtle shifts in colors. And I definitely am by no means an expert now. Uh, I would say I'm definitely still firmly cemented as a beginner. However, learning that by shifting a black a little bit yellow and away from blue, it's going to look more like green, especially when it's next to a blue. And those are things that, you know, you know it in your head that if you put colors next to each other, they're going to influence the way that the other color looks. If you put a red next to an orange, it's going to look much more like a, you know, a reddish color. Um, but if you put a blue next to an orange, it's going to be like super, super warm. And that blue is going to look way more vibrant next to an orange than it's going to look next to a green. And using that information that you know and putting it into practice is way harder than I thought that it was going to be, personally. So it was cool to have something that really made it easy to grasp as a concept. This is one of the reasons that drawing and painting from reference are super, super good tools. I know everyone talks about how you should use reference or you shouldn't use reference and why and when and where you can and how you can use reference, but honestly, reference is going to be your best tool for pretty much anything. Drawing from life is always going to have a better impact on your art. Um, when you draw things that are real and in front of you, there's perspectives that cameras can't grasp, there's colors that cameras also do not pick up the same way your eyes do. So it's always, always, always better to draw from real life, especially because if you're using a real life reference, you're much less likely to get yelled at or scolded or looked down on by other artists. Um, but also, as far as like copyright claims go, if I draw my sister from real life, I'm not going to get anyone telling me that I can't do that. But if I paint an exact picture that I found on Pinterest, obviously that's a little bit different. So those are always sort of things to keep in mind. But even if all you have is picture references, as long as you're not claiming for it to be your own work, it can be super, super helpful to look at photo references, figure out why the colors look the way they do and where they look the way they do and how you can replicate them. Um, painting something multiple times or drawing it multiple times in different time increments can really help you sort of figure out where your best shorthand lies, which can help in, you know, finding an art style, which is something that a lot of artists covet. But it also is just really helpful in showing you where your fundamentals are supposed to be. The things in your brain are not the way they are in real life. And that doesn't apply to just people like me who have a very difficult time visioning things in their mind's eye, but also just to everybody. Artists lie all the time. We love beauty and perfection and just this sort of 
vision that smooths out things that don't need to be smoothed out. And because of that, art will sometimes lose a lot of its realism, lose a lot of its sort of structure, because we want everything to look perfect all the time. And a difference in texture and a, you know, a lump in a shirt or a wrinkle in fabric or, you know, a weird shadow. These are all things that can add a lot of life and personality and they just make art and real life what they are. And by using photo reference, even if you're not doing realism, even if you're just trying to capture sort of an essence, whether you're using video reference or photo reference or you're looking at something in real life, it's training your eye how to see things and translate them onto the paper. And that's super, super important especially as a new artist or a sort of inexperienced artist, even more like, you know, myself, I would, I would put myself in a sort of intermediate category. When your brain sees a straight line or a circle or a sloped line, it automatically tries to put it into a shape that it, that, that it already knows. It tries to make it something that it can understand. And your brain can't understand everything. And that is something that using reference can really help. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't use reference for everything, that your art is bad. And obviously, that's not the case. And I'm not saying that I think 100% of the time you should use a reference for something. Because I don't think that that's true either. I just do really, really really value painting and drawing from reference. It is the best tool that we have and there's a lot of, you know, conversation that surrounds it in the art community as a whole and I think that it's important to be another voice reminding people on my level and beginners and even people that are slightly better than me, that using reference is really, really, really helpful. It helps you learn and build core skills, and it's great. Highly recommend. I'm going to switch gear a little bit and talk about this painting here that I've worked on and haven't said anything about. This is a photograph of a car underwater from flooding and I just thought that it captured the sort of vibe I was going for perfectly. And after the first piece that I did and realizing just how desaturated I wanted my colors to be and using that first piece as a practice and warm up almost. I didn't struggle with this one nearly as much as I thought I would. I had this idea of what colors I wanted to use and how exactly I wanted to desaturate them. And I did end up doing a little bit of shifting. My underpainting was a little bit too green in some places and it was definitely not dark enough, but that is the point of an underpainting. Um, yeah, no, I, I found this one to be super, super relaxing and not stressful at all. It was, it was great. It was a great experience to paint it. I don't remember the last time that I painted water. I don't know if I could say that there for sure was a last time, actually. I mean, I'm sure at some point I've painted water, but if I can't remember it, I really can't reflect on the experience. So there's that. But I did find it super, super fun, super calming and relaxing. The reflection in the water was super fun to paint. 
and just like the texture of the ripples and the waves i didn't get super super like high detail with this um and i'm glad that i didn't but it does sort of show me the places that i was hesitant and because of that i definitely am going to make a point to revisit this as a subject matter because it was just so fun and i learned a lot from it i liked seeing texture that the water had and the way it was reflecting things and what it was reflecting and where those reflections were and just the the colors i loved that really really dark blue down in the bottom corner on the on the left it was just so fun to mix it was so fun to paint it had this vibrancy that was still desaturated enough that it fit in with the theme but it was just so beautiful and laying it down felt great i had so much fun with this piece. I almost wish that I did a different warm up before the first painting because I definitely was a little bit more stiff for that one than I wished that I had been. However, I can only complain about it so much because if I had used a different piece for a warm up, then I would just be disappointed in that piece a little bit. So it is what it is. I need to get back into doing warm-ups before making art because I did always find that super helpful, but sometimes I'm just so eager to create things that I skip it, and that's fine. It's fine. I wish that I was better at warming up, but it's fine. <laughs> Maybe that is a goal that I will revisit. We can talk about that another time, sort of. Good, good exercises, warm-up exercises to do before painting to sort of get it out of the way. Definitely something we'll have to revisit. So I already said that I wish I had warmed up before the first painting. The thing that I wish I had done in the second painting here was pay a little bit closer attention to what color the shadows on the car were. I used a bluish color mixed in with the pink, and I think it looks just a little bit unnatural, but at the same time, I kind of also like that vibe, so maybe instead I should look at how to do that in more places than just one. Overall, I do think that the colors ended up being pretty consistent throughout the piece, um, which I don't actually know how much I tried to do. I do have a habit of leaving paint just all over my palette and therefore mixing little bits in with each other, which does make it easier to keep a piece cohesive in a sort of color family because with one paint being in all of your mixes, it'll make it look a little more cohesive. But I'm not doing it intentionally, and I feel like it's cheating, and it isn't, it doesn't matter, but I feel like it is anyways. <laughs> I also did not do any drawings underneath these paintings, and I normally will. I don't think I did in my last video either, where we painted some crystals, or rocks, or gems, or whatever I called that video. Um, but I think, I think it was fine for the first painting, but I also think that the second painting probably could have used one. This is my first time painting a car and also probably my first time capturing the likeness of a car with any medium at all. Um, and I honestly, think it turned out really cool but I also know that it's a little wonky looking and that's fine because I painted it and I made it and it's cool but it is for sure just a, just a smidge just a smidge wonky <laughs> um so perhaps if I had practice a little bit 
or put in any amount of guidelines. I could have made that car look a little bit more believable, but I, I do think it turned out really cool. I am pretty content. I personally feel like I captured the aesthetic that I was going for, the feeling, the vibe, the whatever, you know? Um, but please give me your opinions. Tell me how you think I did in the comments. That would be super, super helpful. If you have any recommendations or anything, always game to hear it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and watching me paint some stuff. <laughs> have a great one. Bye.